we'll get things going with something a little bit different today. All right, all right, all right. Today's viewing enjoyment. We're gonna need to see how with this handles flight simulation in one of my most all-time favorite airplanes. It, uh, you can control or fly. I, I have sitting behind me a complete Turtle Beach flight simulation rig. Yoke, throttle quadrant, pedals, stand, everything on some sliders. I just don't want to move a bunch of stuff around and slide it and hook it up. I kind of want to just go for a little short, enjoyable flight. Make a video test here with even more audio. Um, looking for a better sound quality. Using a Blue Yeti Nano mic. And I think that just think I can make it sound better and still capture good audio. I'm using the Elgato HD60X capture card and I'm not using anything through the Microsoft um, chat link, Elgato chat link. Um, that might be a next month thing. Um, yeah, so yeah, and this is this version of the plane is uh, from Stolatix, I believe, Hot Rod Liveries back. And yeah, look at that. Every everybody in real life would love to have a reworked Beaver with a panel set up like this in done tastefully in just beautiful chrome custom leather interior yeah and then you get to the exterior of the plane and you look at something like this with a canoe to match the super beaver um as far as flight sim world goes, I highly, highly, highly recommend this. The uh, Hot Rod Liveries Pack 1 and Hot Rod Liveries Pack 2. Um, yeah, they do incredible transformation to the plane. Just incredible. It started as an incredible plane. Uh, and they just take it to the next level. So... Back out of here. Get on to the world map. I think Sydney Harbor sounds like a really, 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 really good place to go see. We'll take off from the Bankston, Bankston Aerodrome. Yeah. We'll just go for ramp 144. Parking. The beauty of uh, that adds in my ability to control weather. And I don't want to deal with real world weather. So Going to set it for tropical rays. Get up to about five thirty in the morning, out of look green. the sim will not CTD 
happened already one time. I'm on a Black Tower Xbox Series X. Yes, looking behind me, everyone can see I am a fan. I'm a huge fan. haven't flown or done any fly simming for quite some time because knowing what I know about computers and architecture and stuff like that it's frustrating to know that uh, a people really didn't take Microsoft's admission as to why they had kind of stopped a lot of stuff stop doing a lot of things was basically because they had ran up against the wall of what they could do. And when you really get down to understanding computers, it means that pretty much everything drives at an end where they, they can't do anymore. There's just nothing that can be done. Okay, we're going to get the yoke out of the way for now. First thing we want to do is make sure the avionics master is off, the battery master is off. So Parking brake is set to oh, position, and the door is open. There is a small prep we're going to need to use here entirely. Pedo cover. And turn that off for now. We want to set the mixture to full rich. Exercise the prop a little bit and adjust the RPM to 100%. Then exercise the throttle motion and crank it open approximately one inch. Here, want to set our fuel selector to our center tank for takeoff. Then we want to turn on our beacon light, navigation light. on magnetos set both make certain that the cap is tight and the emergency cutoff is in the proper position. Mm 
then to prime the engine and normally we look for some fuel pressure. We'll give the wobble. There we go. We got some fuel pressure showing. Turn the boost pump on. We can turn the Tito heat should be. Set to on. Turn the strobe on. And we'll get some panel lighting going on. And yes, next thing uh, we want to do is make sure our pitch trim value is. Set. Get the alternator on. The avionics rolling. Check. Check. Add that back again. Verify that the water rudder handle is in, ta in fact in position. Breaks off and Some weather going on here. Bankstown Airport information, Charlie 1800 Zulu. Wind calm. Visibility, Niner. Sky condition, clear. Temperature, tree one. Two point, one tree. Altimeter, two niner decimal, seven four. Visual runway, one one center, visual runway, one one left, and visual runway, one one right in use. Landing and departing runway 11 center runway 11 left and runway 11 right. VFR aircraft say direction of flight. All aircraft read back hold short instructions. Advise controller on initial contact UF Charlie. 
Bankstown Airport information, Charlie 1800 Zulu. Let's see, which way do we want to go? Um, I think we want to go to the east. Bankstown Ground de Havilland, November Niner, Tree Echo request taxi for departure to the east with Charlie. De Havilland, November Niner, Tree Echo taxi two and hold short of runway one one center using taxiway Kilo Alpha, Tree Alpha, Charlie Alpha one. Contact tower on one two three decimal six when ready. Taxi oh, hold short me runway me one one you. center using taxiway Kilo Alpha Tree Alpha Charlie Alpha One de Havilland Niner Tree Echo. East. one of the benefits of having a good yoke and pedal set is the ability to do differential braking for your turns. And just in the name of wanting to go for a flight and do a little taste and see how things go, I'm going to skip a few things. Build the tower that we are ready to go. Bankstown Tower de Havilland, November 9 or 3 Echo, ready for east departure at runway 11 Center. De Havilland, November 9 or 3 Echo Altimeter, 29 or Decimal, 741 Com departure to the east approved. Cleared for takeoff runway 11 Center. Cleared for takeoff runway 11 Center, de Havilland, 9 or 3 Echo. I hope I went the way we will go. Lap set for takeoff. Use pump set to on. Verify fuel. Water air is up. Pedals are free and clear. Throttle runs up. It's about the runway. Pushing. And we're not going to muck about here. We need to get going.
gear up. Get the flaps go into the climb, cruise climb position. Try to get some trim dialed in here. Positive rate for them. The Avalon Niner Tree Echo continue for east departure. Bring the prop back to about 85%. Bankstown Tower de Havilland, November Niner Tree Echo, continue for east departure. the aircraft level off, see what we need to do. Let it pick up some speed. will take us to the coast. We'll make a left turn or a right turn. We're, we're going to fly around the area and see what there is to see. Yes, I'm using HDR. Yes, I'm using Some other mods for traffic. Niner Tree Echo leaving my airspace frequency change approved. ATC man. Play the ATC Next game. Town Tower de Havilland, November Niner Tree Echo frequency change. transitions and stuff we do however want to listen for the planes well that's a horrible sun flare filter that they have, whatever they've done graphically to the game to the sim I don't necessarily consider it to be the game in any way shape or form I'm not an Australian. 
I would love I would love to be an Australian. I'd love to live in Australia. Uh, I have my reasons outside of politics even. Uh, oh, this looks nice. Let's see what this looks like over here. It's kind of how is the uh, X Box X, the Black Tower handling things. So I haven't flown in, really, really, I haven't flown in a long time. I just became frustrated with it. It's like a lack of all around aircraft for everybody knowing what I know is available in the free market for PC users and some of the other issues. Um, yeah, it just really got the life sucked out of it for me and I've been staring at a couple of thousand dollars worth of fly simming equipment. Uh, so I thought I would get up this lovely Sunday morning and myself from the bitter coldness of the land in the northwest I live in and take myself somewhere that's I can enjoy the scenery and make the weather exactly what I wanted it wanted to be. And another reason why I've done that is because I keep my sim way trimmed down. I don't even pr pretend that I can load everything that I've purchased from the Microsoft Marketplace as well as all the available updates and things like that. It's, that's what people have to understand is, is you cannot have everything installed all at the same time and expect your sim to run in any semblance of decent quality whether you're on a Series S box or a Series X box. It's just not going to happen. It's fantasy that doesn't even rate wishful thinking. I have a third party aircraft spawner that I haven't flown for so long since I reworked my sim. I don't know that I have the correct settings, so we might be great to see in some odd looking aircraft spawns and Oh yeah, I think it's really taxing it down there for whatever reason. Could be the number of vehicles. That's another thing that a lot of these people don't understand in the community is they don't know anything about 3D CAD structuring, model making. They really don't even understand what a polygon is and they don't understand when you try to explain to them that yeah, all these cool airports with all these completely done interiors and hangars and all of this stuff adds polygons to the count, which by nature you have to make a decision. Do you want a high frame rate and smooth experience or do you want graphical candy and polygons that are going to ultimately slow your sim down? Another thing about Microsoft Flight Simulator is, is even though you think, well, I'm just flying on this piece of the earth, well, unfortunately with that stuff, when you have it loaded up and the game loads, that stuff loads too. And you might be flying someplace on the opposite side of the earth, but Microsoft is still trying to make sure that that airport and all of its fancy interior and flashing lights and all the stuff is available at your heart's desire to flick over there and it just the polygon count just chews through processor cycles and that's what causes poor frame rates stuttering and 
normally. I have birds loaded up. I'm not sure if they made a traffic module, traffic insight module for anything yet, but this is aftermarket pay, Sydney Harbor area. looking pretty good we have a pretty decent I have a pretty decent internet connection where I live I'm very grateful for that I'm, I'm really grateful for everything that I have I'm grateful to have had a S series Xbox and been able to move up to an X um, really I did it too specifically for fly sim that's all I did was fly 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 being a retired disabled vet, you have a lot of time on your hands. Yeah, in look, I can tell that I'm taking frame hits on the box. Things aren't looking bad. Yeah, that's pretty taxing stuff there, though. And it can also be because this is my first time through after having cleared my cash, my scenery cash. Well, it, it, I'll be I'll be surprised to see what Microsoft does with things like birds and power lines and all the stuff in 2024's iteration or evolution. But I would like to see birds become real. Wildlife that can be problematic. I think it would be real interesting. Um, that and power lines. Power lines should be real things, not just things that Parallel 42 has blessed us with the challenging experiences of dealing with power lines in some of their scenery packs. Which, if I'm going to shout out and highly promo anybody for fly simulator scenery, um, aircraft, and, and a host of other things people really don't know, is Parallel 42 products. Hands down. You can't go wrong. I'm, I'm waiting till I can afford the Juice Goose and... Uh, couple of new things that I haven't been able to afford due to economics. We'll leave that at that because it can make me hyper political and sick and a <laughs> Oops, look like a bone. Nope. It's made that way. Oh yeah, this is just fantastic. I think loop around the city and come in from that side over there and just crash well don't really know what occurred there but test purposes and schmiggles that's a place to wrap this up.